hi my name is Dominga and I'm a mother of multiples and thanks for tuning into my channel today we are coming in on the tail end of February which is heart health month and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a condition that I went through peripartum cardiomyopathy but before I do with it being heart health month I just want to send out a reminder to everyone to make sure get your annual exams done don't minimize any symptoms that you may be having pay attention to your body and I say that from a personal perspective I'll talk a little bit about that in my situation but it's just very important that you're making sure you take care of yourself okay so with that being said peripartum cardiomyopathy or PPCM what is it so I've done a little bit of research I knew it from my perspective but I only listened to what I heard and what I thought applied to me I didn't really listen to everything and so what it boils down to is the deterioration of your cardiac function and it's typically usually within the last months of pregnancy okay and it involves the systolic dysfunction of the heart and a decrease of the left ventricle arrhythmias it's your heart muscle is not contracting forcefully enough in order to get enough blood to your major organs and out of your heart so there's a number it's called your ejection fraction rate it measures the amount of bl blood that pumps out of the heart's lower chambers and leaves your heart's left ventricle okay so it's the amount that's pumped out of your heart because your heart's never completely empty your ejection fraction rate depending on what research papers you read should be normally 55 to 75 percent i was around 40 percent okay which wasn't terrible and I think maybe that's why I wasn't feeling as many symptoms as drastic as some others may have and so which I'll talk about that in my other video um, I'm actually gonna do this as a two-part one talk today a little bit more about peripartum cardiomyopathy the other video will be a little bit more about my personal experience because there is one symptom that everywhere I've read I have not heard of this symptom as a matter of fact when I told the doctors and the nurses about it, I'm sure they probably went to the other room and talked about me and thought I was crazy because it was something I've never heard before. So, but I'll talk about that in the next video. So I am I went into heart failure and kidney failure. And this is the reason why. Now, there's many different signs. So I wanna to talk to you today about some of the signs that you may have and also some of the contributing factors because I paid attention to what I wanted to pay attention to. I was older and I was having twins. That was enough for me. That was the reason why. So peripartum cardiomyopathy generally occurs in one in every three to 4,000 live births in the U.S. So it is rare. It wasn't anything that I was even aware was possible. But there's a lot of contributing factors that can be involved with this. So I want to go over those today. Now, actually, most of them applied to me. Not all, but most of them did. So first of all, one of the contributing factors is uh, multiparity. Basically, you've had at least one previous birth, which I did. I have a 22. He was, at the time, he was 22 years old. Right, 22, yes. I'm already forgetting his age. Now you know you're old when you forget your kid's age. So... 22 year difference which I would have thought my body would have done like a reset or something but no uh, that was one thing another contributing factor was multi-fetal pregnancy and I did have twins so that was another use of certain medications to prevent premature labor this was not one I was even aware of and I was on this for months I had months of bed rest months of contractions and so I was on medication for quite a while, which could have been another contributing factor. High blood pressure. I did have preeclampsia towards the end of my pregnancy, so my blood pressure was high. African descent is another, and prior toxin exposure. It didn't give a lot of examples. One it did give was cocaine, but um, I'm sure there's other examples out there that may affect other people as well. So those were some of the ones oh another was over 30 of of older age now what is it 30 35 is considered a um, 
geriatric pregnancy. Yeah, so I was a tad higher than that. As a matter of fact, I was 45 years old when I got pregnant. And if the boys had been born on their actual birth date, we would have actually had our birthdays within a few days of each other. So those were some prior contributing factors that affected me. Well, not all of those, most of those though. So what are some of the symptoms of PPCM? Abdominal pains was one of them. I'd been in pain for a long time. I'd had contractions for months. So abdominal pain, that wasn't even noticed. Um, I talked a little bit about how folks have a tendency to not pay attention to their symptoms. And it's not just because they're being completely oblivious or naive. I mean, I wasn't being naive. I had symptoms, but some of these symptoms I attributed to something else. I'm pregnant with twins and I'm old. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's gonna be some conditions. There's gonna be some symptoms. Uh, also, I was on this medication and a lot of the symptoms for PPCM are the same as this medication as well. Weight gain, goodness, I'd gained like 60 pounds. And actually at the end, towards the end, I was, had gained over 90 pounds. So I gained a lot of weight. I was very, very swollen. Water retention, I was very swollen. As a matter of fact, so swollen that my compression socks ultimately ended up having compression thigh highs. And if I could have had a whole compression bodysuit with just the tummy sticking out, that would have been it. But, I, I, cause I was swollen, I was swollen everywhere. So, but once again, I was on that medication, that medication side effects, one of those was water retention. Lightheadedness, I can barely breathe, I can barely sleep, pregnant with twins. I mean, I seriously lived in my bedroom for months where I went from the bed to a chair, back to a bed, to more like a recliner type chair. And if, on a good day, I got to go over to the couch. That was pretty awesome. That was, that was an awesome day. But just, just goes to show you that these things that I was experiencing, I was having them anyway. So it didn't dawn on me that at any point that any of these could be symptoms aside from the medication I'm taking, aside from the pregnancy with twins. So uh, tired. I was so tired I couldn't sleep sometimes. It was always overtired. I would have micro naps where I would talk to you and I just wouldn't, I'd sleep for like five seconds and wake up and think it was like an hour and it was only a few seconds. So coughing up blood, that was the one thing that actually got me to go to the hospital. And the last one, like I said, it is not in the regular symptoms that I've heard of before. So I'll wait to talk to about that till I talk more and expand more on my personal experience. So peripartum cardiomyopathy is rare, yes. I don't know exactly when I went into heart failure. All I know is that we ended up going to the hospital and they told me I was in heart and kidney failure. That's all I knew. I, because the symptoms were so close on everything, I just did a smooth transition from one to the other. So that's peripartum cardiomyopathy. I know I'm talking lightly about it. It's going on four years. Doesn't mean it, it changes the impact. I think me personally, I have a tendency to try to forget to block certain things. But with having such adorable little boys and such, uh, so much different life now from before then that that's what I try to focus on now. So if you are experiencing this or if you know someone who was recently diagnosed, just know that I know the numbers are small, but we're there. There's groups that are out there that are support groups. And it does help to know that someone else is out there and experienced the same thing. It does help to know that you can recover from this. It does help to know that it doesn't have to dictate the rest of your life, but you do need to take control. Listen to what the doctors tell you. Eat what they tell you to eat, drink what they tell you to drink, do what they tell you to do, because it can make a difference. Now, does everybody recover? No. I still hear of people that have 
gone back to heart failure afterwards. So I definitely do need to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. As a matter of fact, thank you, thanks to one of my friends, we did a 5K today and um, she helped push me and I need that. And even with twins, there's no excuses. I need to get out there. I need to, to make sure that I'm taking care of myself and putting my body and myself first. So if, if you know someone who has peripartum cardiomyopathy, yes, it is serious. Yes, they do need your help. Yes, they do need your support. I'll talk more about that in my next video. But the next video, I want to talk more, like I said, about my personal experience and the one symptom that I still haven't seen show up yet. So it's pretty crazy. But I'll talk to you then. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to sharing more Adventures of Multiples with you.